Hey everyone, so I usually don't start these videos with a disclaimer, but I really wanted to pop in here to just chat with you before I roll the clip. <laughs> Basically, I filmed this video back on like January 8th or something, so over a month ago, and I was not happy <laughs> when I filmed it. Honestly, I really was unhappy with my writing process. I was not feeling good. Um, I might have mentioned this on here, but my mental health and my writing are really linked. So it's not just like I was making this video because I was upset about writing, but because it was also impacting my mental health. And so I want to just talk about this for a second. I was pretty upset when I filmed that. Um, usually I don't film when I'm very upset and I'm like having a crisis, but for some reason I just needed to talk out these feelings and sort of concretize them because I'd been feeling them for weeks and I just couldn't put them into like actual concrete words. This video is highlighting me at probably one of my most vulnerable moments um, and I want to make sure that you guys are aware of that before you go into it because the last thing I would want is to upset anybody with my content. This video really does get messy. It gets vulnerable. It gets negative. And I, I'm still hesitant to post it now because of how I was feeling, but I thought this might help some of you uh, at least see like the behind the scenes process of what genuinely sometimes happens. But just a warning that this video does get demotivating, it gets ugly, it gets negative. If that's something that you might be sensitive to, maybe tread carefully for this one because this one's definitely the most raw of my uh, like side table author tube chats. Stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm going to be reflecting on sort of what I've learned, how I'm feeling over a month later, what I would have said to myself in this moment and stuff. So and so I'm going to roll the video now and I hope you can take something away from it. I'm not going to say enjoy because it's kind of angsty. But anyway, here it is. <sighs> oh yeah, we're sitting back here, which you know what that means. It means Rachel's going to angst about writing for a little bit. Guys, I am so tired. <laughs> I'm so tired of writing not working out for me. I know that like all of these videos is just me complaining. So I'm really sorry about that. I just, I'm feeling a lot of things right now. And I know that other people probably go through this too. And so I think we get some solidarity here. I'm hoping I am really struggling right now with my book which is no secret. I probably mention it in every video, but in particular, it is really getting to me today. I think I'm just emotionally not happy that I am failing at this um, in some regard. And I feel almost like my brain is letting me down. I feel like I'm letting myself down, which is so frustrating. So let's just, let's bring it back. So feeding habits, you all know, there has been so much drama with this book. I mean, there's usually drama with every book, but this book in particular, I've like documented some of the drama in like videos. So I'm putting this out there. This book has been difficult um, and it's just getting harder. Like I thought by now, like the universe would reward me with something a little nicer than this, but it's not happening. I'm so unhappy writing this book. It doesn't bring me any joy. It's like, come on. Can I get some like long sustaining joy? I feel like it gives me sustaining stress rather than sustaining joy. Maybe it's not just the book right now. Maybe I'm like, I don't know. I'm going back to school on Monday. There's like a lot of things just in general, you know, things have been difficult, right? But writing in particular, hard. And I've been like documenting a how I learned to love writing again kind of thing. And it was just me basically from this point started from the bottom now we here kind of thing like from this point to like how I got to a point where I was happier with my writing it was an organic process that I couldn't really pinpoint exactly but I've been meaning to make a video on that process except what I learned is like the way that I guess I, I learned to love writing is that I have to just accept the truth about it and the truth is that it doesn't always love me I am putting as much as I can and I feel like I don't get much in return from from this book in particular. The other stuff, like short stories, poems, I'm totally fine with that. It's just this book. It's like, I am trying so hard to put like 
my love and care into this book and it seems so unfair it's like I'm not getting anything in return and um I'm a very like personal person with with my work it seems like a family member so it seems so unfair but I have to remind myself like I am the one in control but a lot of the time it doesn't feel like it so I just sat down to write my book like I just forced myself to go upstairs and write it because I was like come on dude like you gotta do it and that never worked for me I don't know why I did this but I can't force myself to do anything but I didn't want to wait another three weeks before I drafted but I sat down and I just I can't do it like I I, I I was trying to write something like I was even writing when I was in like my kitchen downstairs you guys know I usually write down there not in my room but I was writing a little bit and I came up here to, to write even more and I'm like listening to like my book soundtrack and nothing like I am writing words but I'm not feeling it and I don't know if it's just me like filming a video right now but like I feel like I need to do something about this like this I am tired of this cycle and I don't know if like I'm getting like emotion and like a little emo because I just like got out of that cycle of like not liking like my work like being miserable in like my writing like the experience itself I, the experience of drafting is very important to me I am a huge person when it comes to drafting I don't enjoy editing as much so drafting is an incredibly intimate part of my experience and so it can really affect me and I don't know if it's just me talking to you guys right now but like I feel like making a huge change to this book so that I feel excited about it and I don't really know what to do like I don't know I was sitting down and I was trying to figure out like what to do and I realized that a lot of like the scenes that I've written the last few scenes have all been like the same scene it's just been slightly different they've all been the same scene and I don't really know what to do about that like what a, what other conflict am I supposed to introduce in this book like I feel so lost I just want somebody to like come down from the heavens and tell me what to do but I know like I'm the only person who can do it but I'm like I don't know if I want that responsibility I don't know if I could do this on my own it's like almost like I don't even want to talk about it so it's like not even like like I want to talk about it but I also don't want to talk about it because it exhausts me and I don't know how to phrase things to hopefully you know be productive in the conversation it's like I don't know how to do that anymore because this book is really taking the life out of me right now and I don't know guys I can't I can't keep writing like this I can't I can't I know it's just a point in the process this is so normal I'm having a bit of a crisis right now if you couldn't tell but it's so normal to feel this way but I feel physically ill. I don't feel good and I want to be able to enjoy myself with writing fostered again. Like what happened? I genuinely feel like I could be doing more. It's like I just need to sit down and like do more but like I try to do more and like it's not happening and so it's like I don't I don't know what else I can give when I'm like already giving as much as I can and the results aren't coming I'm, I'm trying to think of like what I can do like a big thing that can happen I feel like I just need like something so abnormal to happen in this book that it completely throws me off my game because the game that I'm playing right now isn't working I want a different approach but I don't know what to do I'm thinking I could change points of view but like even then I don't even know what that would do I know I could just try it like I don't know what stops me from trying these things because it's not like I can't go back to the other drafts like I can just do this in another document so I just need to be a little braver I guess and just jump for it but I'm feeling so conflicted right now it's a moment of emotion so I definitely feel like I just you know I want to quit this sucks but you know it's not gonna feel like that forever I'm trying to tell myself that but ah, this cycle man it's so painful to go through this cycle like it's physically painful to go through the cycle of it's working and then it's not working it's working and then it's not working it's working and then it's not working like I know that that's normal and I've written so many books you'd think by now like someone like me this is my 11th novel I would like have the process down like I would be okay with you know the problems that I'm running into I would know how to fix it but I 
don't. Like, I'm so lost. I feel overwhelmed. And my number one thing is, like, I, I know my goal is to enjoy writing this book. I know that that's my goal. And yet I just feel incapable of doing that. Um, and that makes me emo, which is why I am here talking to you. Because I, I know that I have the capability to do it. I know I'm a good writer. So then why can I not apply that knowledge that I am good at writing? Like, I know I'm a good writer. Why can't I apply that to, like, writing this stupid book? Every time I, like, sit down to draft, it's not really, like happiness like you know when I'm writing short stories like I'm usually excited to go back and write them unless I make a wrong decision and then you know then I struggle a little bit and then I get back on it but usually I'm like I'm excited to go back and like reread like a poem or reread like a short story or you know take a look what was the last thing I wrote I'm excited about it but with feeding habits it's like I don't even want to reread what I just wrote because like I know it's like gonna be the exact same thing as the scene that came before it and everything feels so monotonous I don't know what to do about it. I wish I could just make a decision. I know that I have the power to make a decision. So then why can't I just make the decision? You know, I should be able to do that. But I think I do this all the time. Like even I've been trying to like plot or like think of an idea for a third book because I'm, I guess I'm kind of like running away. Like I'm hoping I do this all the time, I guess with Fostered, like all of the books almost, at least the recent books. I just want to finish it so bad that like, I will think of like another book to write <laughs> that like I can like just quickly finish this one and then like I'll go and write another one and then maybe I'll come back and fix the other one. I didn't do that with moth work. I had like finished moth work to a point where I didn't think it was gonna have a sequel. So I, I didn't need a sequel to motivate me to finish moth work. I know I'm not saying writing moth work was hard, but writing feeding habits is so much harder. And I I want it to 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 ease up on me. I feel like, why is everything so heavy on me right now? Like, what am I doing wrong to the point where this process is so bad for me? Like, it is not good for me to be writing in this way. Like, I don't want to be, but I don't know what else to do. I, I know that writing this book in general has been a struggle. I enjoyed writing chapter one. Chapter two eh, was a bit hard. Chapter three was miserable. It took me so long to write that one. It took me so many rewrites to write that chapter. It was horrible to write that chapter. Chapter four was awesome. I loved that. It was the best chapter, like, best thing I've ever written, like, in terms of, like, enjoying it. Like, experientially, it was the best. Chapter five, I enjoyed, but, like, the steam was running out a little bit. It wasn't as enjoyable as chapter four. Chapter six was so hard. <laughs> to write like it took me so long to write that chapter Ch chapter seven struggle bus chapter eight like sort of was easier but it was still like a struggle it was easier because i was having fun with the boys again but it was still hard i, I took it in different directions a few times because i knew i wasn't getting it right and then chapter nine like it's come together like a bit quicker than the other ones but like at this point it's the same scene over and over again so i'm still struggling i feel like the whole book has just been hard and I know not every book is going to be the same and not every situation is going to be the same and I try to tell myself that and I always tell you guys that it's just like in this instance I don't I don't feel good like this I don't feel good not being happy with the book I'm the kind of person where like I I need to be happy with it in order to like progress like and to feel good about it like like I said drafting is a very important part of my process I don't like to just like go through it very quickly because you know drafting is the best part of writing for me it always has been and especially with these books they, they're not really getting edits because I'm not publishing them like I will go back over and edit them and I do have a few edits to make but they're not you know they're not gonna go through rigorous super rigorous edits actually you know they'll go through edits where I'm pretty critical about it but not like super rigorous because I'm not publishing them but that's why I feel like it's even harder because it's like I really only have this one chance to get it right which I know is untrue because I can make unlimited edits to this book I'm not publishing it like I can make edits whenever but for some reason, like, my brain is not understanding that. Like, I have this philosophy, and I want to follow the philosophy, but my brain's like, nope, we're gonna go, like, follow a different philosophy. And it's hard. It's really hard when, like, your brain and, like, everything else is, like, fighting. Um, your brain and heart, not connected. They are not connected right now, and I just don't feel, um, like I'm capable of finishing 
this book right now. I don't feel like I, I don't know. I, I've, I've been feeling really like disconnected from my work recently. It's almost like I don't even understand what I'm trying to achieve. Like almost like a part of me has an intention with how I'm writing, but I'm so deeply buried in the subtext that me, the writer, I'm getting lost. And like, I know like things are happening and I'm doing things on purpose on the page, but I feel so disconnected from it that I don't even feel like I'm a part of the process of writing the book. It's more like I'm just sitting there and then eventually chapters are appearing. I don't feel invested in the book. I mean, the last time I felt genuinely entrenched in the book was probably a few weeks, if not a, I don't even know, it's probably like two months ago at this point. Time has been going so fast. I was writing this scene with like the boys on the beach and that was like, I felt immersed. I felt alive. Like I was the writer and I was in control of the scene, but whatever like I'm writing now, I just feel like a timid little excavator who's like slowly scraping away, but I'm not doing the work. It almost, it feels so disconnected to me and it's so hard to, to not feel connected to the most like intimate part of your writing process, what's supposed to be the most intimate part of your writing process. And it's been weird because like, I feel like I'm confusing myself with like how I write. Like I write a lot, like I mentioned this in the subtext, which is fine, but I feel like somewhere along the way I lost myself. Like I, 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 I'm not even the writer of the book anymore. It's so strange, especially since this story feels so important to me. But ever since I switched into Harrison's point of view, it doesn't feel like my book. Like in Lonan's head, it felt okay. Like I still struggled a lot, but every single chapter I've written with Harrison has been so hard and I don't know why. I don't know why. It's, it's not just him because, you know, I wrote an entire book, like so many thousands, hundreds, you know, something tens of thousands of words in his point of view in moth work. I, do, I don't know what's going on. I'm so confused. <laughs> I'm so unhappy with this process of writing the book. I'm not unhappy with the book. I'm just unhappy with the process. I don't feel happy when I'm writing this book. Like, I don't feel like I'm connected to it. I don't even feel, I don't feel, I mean, I'm so passive. I'm passively writing and I don't want to be passive in my process. I'm trying to think of what is going to make this better, but I can't right now. I think I'm just going to have to take, take a, take a break. Those are just a few thoughts that I'm feeling. I am sorry. This is such a downer. I feel like this is even more intense than my other author tube real chats because like you kind of caught me in a moment. Usually when I film these, I'm like not upset, but like right now I'm like not in it, guys. I'm not gonna give up on it, but I just, I don't like what's happening right now. I'm staring at some books that I like though, so I might just go page through those and you know, hope that a little, little bit of inspiration strikes me. I will talk to you guys later. I'm sending you guys a lot of love and support. Um, I know it's, it's difficult. Um, and I never mean for these videos to be just like a big downer. I just wanted to, you know, document just kind of some truth in writing this book. It's not all bad. It's mostly, you know, mostly good. It's just feeding habits, man. Feeding habits is killing me right now. And I just, I don't want to feel like that. I don't want to feel like the book is against me. I want to feel united with the story. I want to feel like I'm enjoying it and that we're like friends. But right now I feel like it's really fighting me. Maybe I'm fighting it. I don't know. Anyway, I will talk to you guys in another video. Thank you for watching. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Okay. So that was the end of the video. Since filming this, I kind of just want to talk about where I am. So I've done a few things, um, inadvertently done a few things since the filming of this video. Honestly, I can't sit here and say that I did them proactively to help myself because honestly, the pandemic is horrible for me and I think for everybody right now. And so it's really hard to be proactive. So school started basically, I think a few days after I filmed that. Um, and school has been a hell ride so far. It has been just horrific. Second semester is so much worse than first semester, but there's kind of a slight blessing for a school starting up. Besides the fact that, you know, it's not fun, I have not been able to work on my book. So the last time I wrote Feeding Habits was a few weeks ago. I can't even remember. It's been a really long time. So school has picked up quite a bit. So after filming this video, um, I let feeding habits sit for a while. And then of course I had a conversation with my sister and 
I can't really remember how the conversation went, but I was kind of feeling similarly, but even more defeated than I was in this video. I was a bit fiery in this video, but a few weeks after, I was just feeling literally defeated. Like I couldn't do it anymore. So we were talking one night and she reminded me again. She was like, Rachel, like, remember what I said to you? It's not about what works. It's about what you want. It being in Harrison's head is torturing me. And I think I felt a responsibility to stay in his head because I wanted to give him a fair shot like I am very close to my characters and I'm not saying Harrison was torturing me because I love him I'm gonna pull up a blog post that I posted about this exact thing just so that I can read it for you and give you guys a sense of you know, where I was at, how I was feeling. So I just posted an, a writing update on the chapter that sort of caused this video to occur. It's called Something Held. It's chapter nine of Feeding Habits. And it was just horrible to, to write for me. The experience was just getting worse and worse as everything went by. I didn't talk about it in the writing update, but I did mention it in this video. Every scene that I wrote was the exact same, and it was becoming really, really hard on my brain. And so I talked about my process in this writing update. This is what I said. Honestly, writing this chapter was a huge up and down. The first half of it came much easier to me, but the rest was a literal hellfire to get through, and I completely stand by that. I think I was incredibly fatigued with writing in Harrison's point of view as I'd been writing it since June. I finished this chapter in either December or January. This book has been a pain to write despite me liking what it is and I really think it being the only place I physically gone since the pandemic makes it even harder to write. I felt claustrophobic in Harrison's point of view since I've been writing it for half a year and in a little breakdown my sister reminded me of something she'd previously told me which is what I just said. It's not about what works, it's about what you want. So I wanted to talk about this for a second and I was watching a Harmony Nice video, I even mentioned it in the blog post, um, on hard to swallow self-care and she basically outlines, like paraphrasing, it's critical that we care for ourselves in ways that might not necessarily be easy to do. You know, self-care has been like commercialized, commercialized, monopolized to be like putting on a face mask and that's fine too, but it, it makes it seem easy. like put on a face mask, wash it off, and there you go. You self-cared for the day. Or like me, I love doing my nails and spending hours doing my nails. Um, some people would be like, that's self-care. There you, you go. And it is part of self-care. But the harder part of self-care is doing the stuff that you don't want to do, but that will benefit you in the long run, basically. And honestly, leaving Harrison's point of view was one of those hard to swallow self-care tasks that I had to do because my mental health was not happy with me. So you can see in this video, I was just not happy. And, and again, it's not particularly his point of view and what I was writing. It's how I felt while I was writing. Something wasn't there and it might not have anything to do with the content. It might have something to do with me. I don't really know, but... Anyway, my boys are really close to me, and I, I'm, I'm the blog post I say, I'm not picking favorites, but Loden is 2,500 times easier for me to write with at the moment, and I think Harrison's situation and how he deals with it is way too similar to mine, uh, in a way that is way more difficult to place. So, Loden and I, Harrison and I, we're all pretty similar. We're like a squad, right? But Loden and I, like, deal with things very similarly, like, pretty, pretty exactly, I would say. Harrison... Or is a little bit different, um, but we are also very similar. And so because I'm such an empathetic writer, sometimes I get caught up in their mental spaces. And while I was writing with Harris and having a hard time, and especially it's a pretty similar situation. He's holed up in a, an apartment with his mom. He's really unhappy. He doesn't go anywhere. Like it sounds like my life, you know? <laughs> so um, the way he deals with things, though, is a lot more complex than how, like, Lona deals with things. And Lona deals with things in, like, a complex way, but Harrison deals with them even more complexly. It's like a mix of positive and negative reactions, and it's a bizarre. And so I can't even understand it myself, and so I was like, this is way too similar to, I think, what I'm going through right now. And so from the beginning of writing his point of view, I've been struggling, but I kept pushing through, hoping the next chapter would be the one. 
And in the blog post, I say not to burst my own bubble, but there is no such thing in the state of mind I was in as the one. So I was pushing myself to find something that doesn't exist because my brain was really not equipped to do what I needed it to do. So I really didn't want to quit Harrison's point of view, but I had to, not because I dislike him, but because I needed a moment to myself, like my brain was way too full um, and I felt way too seen in the ways I don't know how to understand while writing with him. And so it was ho frustrating at times. Now I, I wanted to talk about something I addressed in, in the blog post and that's my characters taking up space in my head. I just mentioned it. So, you know, there's that saying like, blah, 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 lives rent free in my mind. You know, that's my characters. They live rent free in my head. Um, they take up space but they also take up energy, they take up concentration, they take up time, and they take resources that I need for myself. So I know that might sound silly to some people who don't put, you know, depends on what kind of a writer you are. And I'm not saying this is the best way to write because I, I don't think it is. For me, like I am putting all of my resources into my characters and not into myself. And so empathy is so integral to my process that I give a little part of myself every time I write. For short stories, this is not really a problem. Um, for basically, let me clarify, for any project that isn't fostered, this is not a problem. <laughs> like the empathy that I give to the characters doesn't drain me, it doesn't take stuff from me. But Foster and I are a little weird now. And it's because I've been writing it for so long, I think. I grew up with Foster. Foster shaped my identity. I started writing this series when I was 13 and I'm turning 20 in September. So I've been writing this series for a giant portion of my life, my entire adolescence. I've been writing Foster. And so there's something different that it does to, to my brain that other stories, novels, I don't think this will ever happen, at least I hope not with other projects. But this book in particular has affected the way that my brain has wired itself, at least that's how I think. It's a blessing because I get to dig my heels into the minds of these different characters. I get to experience their stories and I get to feel comfort by them. I get to feel comforted by them. But at the same time, I'm not a machine. Um, and I forget that all the time. Um, it, I didn't realize how much of my resources I was giving to my book. And I, I was doing it out of love for the project. Um, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to give myself to my book. But, you know, I don't want to say it, but I was like, it's kind of like selling your soul to the devil. I was selling my soul to Foster. And I didn't realize I was so wrapped up in it. It was a lot of emotional energy and labor to give everything I had to, to these fictional people. And, um, you know, there's that phrase, the, the artists shall suffer, you know, whatever. Artists are going to be tortured artists, whatever. I was doing that to myself. I don't think, you know, that that's a healthy mindset, but I've never practiced it well. For some reason, with Fostered, I have been suffering every single time I write it. I have not been feeling good. And this is why my mental health and, and writing are inextricable, at least for that project, everything else, whatever. But this project is, is very, you know, close to, to me. I, 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 it took me a minute and probably even editing this video to realize, holy crap, like I am really suffering writing this right now. And it is, it is not, it's not good. Um, and so what I did to change it is I did something that I thought might help. And I mentioned in this video, I switched point of views uh, or points of view. I went into Lauren's head um, because I miss him a lot. Anyway, um, I just, I wanted to be honest about that. So I, I jumped into his head. I haven't written very much <laughs> since I jumped into his head. I've only written like a half a scene or something. It's not very much, but I titled the chapter. It's called Swan Song. I, I loved it. It's, it's been much, much, much easier to write not even half a scene actually I lied I probably like two or three scenes that I've written but that was weeks ago um and kind of jumping jumping back to like the school thing school has been really busy and it's a blessing and a curse because it's forced me not to write I don't have time or the energy to write feeding habits um and so it's kind of awesome in that way I mean school obviously sucks for like a whole other reasons but I have a whole bunch of other stuff to write. Like I'm talking to you guys right now. I have a poem due on Tuesday that I need to write. Like I, I am a writing major, so I have a lot of writing to do. Um, and so it's kind of a blessing. It's forced me to take a break. And so those are a few things that I've done. I've have been taking a forced break and also uh, I switched 
points of view. Sorry, Harrison, I will miss you. If you are feeling this way, like whether or not, it, whether it's what I was talking about in the video or what I'm talking about now, please take care of yourself. I am going to highlight that so hard. Take care of yourself. I was not doing that in this video because I thought to feel better, I had to write because not writing made me feel worse. But what was actually going to make me feel better in the long term and why I'm feeling much better now is doing the thing that in the short term made me feel like shit. And so the most difficult thing I think that you can do is make a decision that will help you in the long run. That's one of the most difficult things. So take a breather, and as difficult as it seems to step back, it's crucial that you step back. Allow yourself some space, because sometimes we don't realize how much of us we're giving to something. Sometimes we don't realize that. So that's going to be the end of the video. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.